All right. Um, hi guys. Good afternoon. Uh, hopefully you are able to see me, hear me, and also see the screen. Um, so yes. Uh, hopefully everybody is uh, doing well, and um, I hope you were also able to get all your questions resolved again regarding the project in the previous session. And uh, in this one, we'll continue working on that uh, project which we started developing in the last session, and we'll try to implement the backend for it. Right. So I'm taking a very simple example. Think of it as one feature that we are making out of everything for the project. And I've also, you know, parallelly been telling you how to create the document, uh, the project report right, that you have to submit. So I've already given you the sample and I've already walked you through the first couple of sections that are there for the document. Right. The next part of the document also just focuses on the development part of it. So the whole coding bit, and then you have to take screenshots and all of that. Right. So what I will do is I'll just share my screen again, and I'll quickly start by showing you what we built in the previous session. So if you remember, uh, we just did the react part of it for this bit, right? So we were working on a, uh, on an event website sort of a thing. And what we ended up creating was this one. I have not made any changes to that code. This is the exact code that we left off with right in the previous um, session. Okay. So that's what uh, we have. Okay. <clears throat> again, I will take all your questions later. So again, towards the end of the session, I'll take 10, 15 minutes um, to answer all the questions that you might have regarding your projects and everything else. But first of all, let us, you know, focus on getting some part done so that we cover the content. And then, you know, after 7, 715, let's take up all the questions. Okay. So you can keep putting all the questions in the chat if you want to, but I'll just go through them once in one flow later on. Okay. Uh, so yes, this is what we have created, but obviously this is the front end and what we eventually want, you know, at the end of the day is that all of this data comes from the database. Okay. So before we get to the database part of it today, what we'll try to do is we'll try to connect this to a backend. Okay. So we'll modify the code in such a way that we create an express server first, then we create, um, you know, some data, which is right now it will be local to the server and we'll try to create an API endpoint and we'll try to get the data from there. In addition to this, we'll try to create one more component, which will be per city. So remember, if you, you know, if you remember the original output here, uh, again, I'm not going to develop the entire page, but the point here is we have different events happening in every city, right? So if I open up any particular city, for example, then the event details here change. So this is what we'll try to implement uh, for every city. Okay. So we'll try to connect some, uh, you know, like, get some data per city based on the city name that is coming from the user. So we'll read the city name as the input. And then from there, we'll try to get the data. Okay. So these are the two major things um, that we want to work on. Okay. So that we'll understand how the whole setup works. Right. So yes, let's go ahead and get started with this. The first thing that we'll do is create the express part of it and try to fetch this data from express and then we'll create one more endpoint. So I basically want to show you how to read data from the user in the, from the URL. So that's what the idea is, right? So again, this is the code that we have written so far. It's a very simple piece of code. We made three components. The first one is the container, which is about the event. This in turn contains the header. And then it contains a section which has all the event cards. So there are six event cards right now. And we are passing down all of these properties using uh, props, right? Or we are calling all of these properties using props. Now, what we also want to do, you know, at this point is based on the data that comes in, we'll make this dynamic. So if there are three events that are three things that are available, so only three things will be shown. If there are six things available, six cards will be shown. So that's also something that we will set up. But again, this is our front end right now. What we will do next is we'll create a backend folder. So in the menu on the left, I'm creating a backend folder. Okay. Then let us open up our terminal. In the terminal, we'll first switch to the backend folder. So that's CD backend. And then we'll say NPM init. 
right? This is how we create a node or an express server, right? npm init hyphen y. Okay, so as soon as I write that command in, you can see the entire setup uh, is done for us and we get a package.json file. Now I have a couple of resources for you uh, for creating these applications or understanding how to create these applications. I will share those with you in just a minute um, or in some time after I explain this to you, right? So they are basically videos which are smaller project videos uh, for React and Express. And I'll also be making one for MongoDB. I'll just share that with you so that you don't have to watch the entire recording and find what you are looking for. It's a smaller video, comparatively smaller set of videos, uh, which will let you understand the setup part. Right? So how to set up your Express, how to set up your React projects. Um, there are some videos that I've made on that recently. I will share, tell you where those are and I will share those with you as well. Okay, so yes, and now um, again, so uh, Naveen from the YouTube chat, like I already said, I will be answering all the questions in the second half towards the end of the session today. So please stop commenting continuously. It is not going to, um, nothing is going to happen with that. And I've already said that the last 10, 15 minutes, I will take questions until that point. I'm just focusing on explaining the concepts because unless you, you know, understand these concepts, you will not be able to create your projects. So let's first focus on that. And then I will answer all your questions. I will give you the link for abstract submission. I will tell you when to submit, how to submit all of that uh, towards the end of the session. Okay. So, um, yes, like I was saying, I'll share those videos with you wherein you have to upload, like there is a demo, um, you know, showcasing how to create this application. I'll put links uh, for that also in the repository. Okay. But for now, we have to focus on the start script and we can focus on nodemon index.js. Then we can create a file. Now we have done this a couple of times. So I hope you remember the process. But even if you don't, like I said, those videos will be particularly helpful uh, for you, right? So when you start working on the project, I recommend you watch those videos first uh, so that you understand the structure again, and then you can work on your respective um, applications or your respective projects, right? Great. Now this uh, index.js will contain all the code, but before that, we also have to install everything that we need. So here we need npm install express. We need body parser to work with JSON data. Then what else do we need? We need, uh, right now we're not connecting to the database. So we don't need dot env just yet. We'll do that in the next session. Then we need course, right? And uh, we need nodemon, I think, and Axios. Oh no, Axios we need in React. Um, yeah, I think this is everything we need for now. If we need anything else, we can always install it later. And then I'm installing a developer dependency, which is nodemon. Okay, so this is done. I've written, um, you know, all the requirements that we need for now. If we realize that we need something else, we can always add it later. Now let's import or require everything here. So const express is equal to require. And then we need express, that's the first line. Then similarly, we are going to need body parser. And so let's call it body parser equal to require body parser. That's two. Then we can say const app is equal to express. That's three. Then app dot use body parser dot JSON. That's four. Then we can say port. So port is equal to, and this can be, uh, let's say 3001 because that React app will be running. So that will be on 3000. So again, now we are focusing on integrating React and Express. Right? So pay close attention for that. Then uh, we will have app.listen. This will start the server on this port. And then we'll have a callback, uh, which for now will just indicate server is running. So I can say server is running on port, or rather we can say on HTTP localhost. And then followed by the port number. So if we use this syntax, then we should be able to put in variables as you can see, right? So these quotations that I'm using, these are not single or double quotes. These are special quotes uh, available left of the one key or above the tab key on the keyboard. Right? So these are special quotation marks. 
uh, which lets us put variables as well. So we are dynamically putting a variable value within the string. Okay. So this should basically tell us server is running on this port in the terminal. All right. Done. Then we will create our support so can actually this. Okay. And then we can create our uh, endpoint. So that will be get for now because we are only going to get all the event data. Right. So that we app dot get. Then we specify the route. So let's say um, event uh, slash all event cards, for example, right? Or we can just say event cards for now. So we can say event cards. Okay, this is our endpoint. And what this should do is this should return a request response callback, which should you know let us uh, get all the data. So from the front end, if you notice, what we are looking at is this all this data right per event the url the alt text title and description for every event which is this one this is what we are looking to get from the back end okay so let's create it uh, locally for now so we can create a local piece of data so that's const event cards is equal to and then we can create an object like this and let's see view order up okay and we have to put commas everywhere so right now everything is the same. So I will just, you know, stick to the same syntax as well. And this will change to, so I'm just making it into valid JSON format. right? so that this is actually made available. Okay. So I have put image URL, I have put alt text, title and description, and I'm going to change these values based on the website. So I will just take now and, you know, based on the actual website, I am going to change these values quickly. So the second one is music therapy. So that will change. Um, let's change it. So the alt text will change. The title will change. Then the description will change. I'm just copying this quickly so that, you know, we have different values to show and we don't see a single value as well. When copy image address. Done. Typically, you know, in a real world application, you will get this data either from the back end or from the user. Right? So we'll do that as well in the next session. That will be the final connection part where we connect everything together. Okay, so that is done. Then let's copy this one and paste that in. And then I'll copy this image address. For now, I'll stick to three values. Okay, and then we'll add the other three later on. So we want to make it dynamic. Right? We want to check first if three things are showing up. If three things show up, then we can create the other three. So we have the art circle, then we have music therapy, then we have the double party. These are three things that I have added. <clears throat> the images are different. The descriptions are different. Everything is different. Okay. And. Okay. So now let us go ahead and, you know, let's uh, work on this. So what we need to do at this URL is we just want to return so we can just say response dot json okay and then we can just go ahead and um you know return that so that will be event cards that's it so this is it right now we should be able to get this data from the back end okay how can we test it well let's start our server so that's npm start or we can also say node mon but this should be fine right it is already triggering node mon because we have changed our start script so when we write npm start, it will actually run this script. Okay. So once this is done, we can open Thunder Client. Again, if you remember, Thunder Client is a package or an extension that allows us, um, you know, to connect or test API endpoints. So this is event cards. This is our endpoint. And if I just send this right now, uh, okay, let's see the terminal first of all. Yeah, our server is running on 3001 actually. So let's change that. And you can see as soon as I change that uh, 3001, I get this response on the screen. This means the data is being returned by the server. Okay, so this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So this is our backend setup for now. Let me quickly recap this and then we'll focus on the front end. Okay, so what we've done here right now is that we have made a basic express server so basic express package then body parser package port number this is the dummy data for now then we have initiated the application we are using the body parser and we have just created one endpoint 
So if you go to this endpoint that is slash event cards, then we should be able to get that on the screen. Okay, we should be basically, uh, you know, just able to get that response. And that is what we are getting when we tested this with Thunder Client. Now, we want to fetch this in the front end. We want to fetch this data on the front end. So for this, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a local state variable, okay, where we are calling everything. So I think in this screen or in this component where we have all event data, which is about the event, here we can make two things or we can import two things, use state and use effect. So use effect will connect to the API and use state will store the data locally. Let's write that logic. For this, we will also need the Axios package. So we are putting npm install Axios. Okay. And that's it. This is our setup. I think we forgot to work with the course package. We'll set that up if we get the error. So the very first thing is we'll have used state. So for that, we can say const. Again, we can say event cards okay. and then set event cards. Okay. So set event card is equal to use state and by default it will be an empty array. Okay. So this is where the data will be stored. Then we can run the use effect. So we can say use effect and then this will be the syntax of use effect, right? So this is the syntax and then uh, we can put in the URL. So we can say axios dot get connect to the um, you know, connect to the endpoint, and then I can say axios dot get. Once you connect to the endpoint, you can go ahead and fetch the data. Okay, so which data will be fetched? Well, that is the endpoint. So this will be. Uh, let me copy that from here. This is the URL. So we can copy this. Okay, and then what do we want to do with this data? Well, we want the response to be set event cards. So take the response dot data and set it to event cards. So we are saying get, get the response from this URL. Once you get the response, set this value to response.data. Okay. So this should give us all the event card data, right? This is the setup. Next up, what we can do is within this, uh, all event cards, all about event cards, what we can do is we can remove these things. Okay. Because now the data is coming from the backend. So we can remove these things and put this inside. Can you tell me which function do we use here? We have already done this before as well. Which function do we use to loop through this data? Map, perfect. So we can say, uh, this is set event cards. So we can say set event cards and set event cards dot map. What this means is if there is anything in the event cards, as long as it is not empty, then we can go ahead and map through it. Okay. And then in the map, what we want to do for each event card, let's say for each card, we want to return. And what do we want to return about event card? Okay. Such that we can then pass in all those four values. So let's get those again. We have this, these four things. Because we have to pass in these as well, right? We have to pass in the attributes or the props. Without this, our data cannot uh, function or our data will not show up. So let me quickly set these up now. So that's two, this is three, and then description is four. Now let's set this up. So the first value is card dot image URL. Then we have alt. I think this was also called the same thing. So that's um, card dot alt text. Okay, then we have, let's check the third value. So this should be title equal to card dot title. And finally, this should be card dot description. Okay, so this way our data should now show up and we are returning event cards. So it should loop through the whole thing. I think return is not going to be needed. We can check if the output does not show up, then we can add that return. But I think it should show up uh, without any problem. So now um, you can see it says Axios is not defined. We have to import it. So import Axios from 
axios and at this point we might also get the course error uh, okay set event cards is incorrect that is true it is just event cards that's the name of our state variable all right and yes now you can see we get this network error right? this is why we need course you can see network error so remember i told you that we forgot to set up course on our server side so in the back end we imported it i remember installing the package but we did not use it okay so this is what we get if we don't use course course stands for cross origin resource sharing so basically it gives us a network error which means that our front end application is not able to figure out or not able to un safe to connect that is why we get the server error Okay, and we also have to make sure that our backend is running, which it is already running. So what we can do is we can go to our backend file and just like we are using body parser, we can also use course. That's it. We just have to use it like this. Okay, this will make our server restart and then we should be good to go. It says course is not defined. So let's say course is equal to require and then course. Okay, done. Our server is now running fine. And now if you go back to our front end and refresh, you can see the front end does load up. The data is not showing up, I think. So now we should add that return keyword as well. So we can say, I think here we can put return uh, or maybe for each card we can put return. And this should now be able to connect and show the data to us. And what we'll also do is, right, we can just write one line of code again, which is uh, going to be a console line. So console.log and just to see if the data is actually coming in or not. So let's inspect, go to our console and let's check. Okay, let me. And let us restart our front end also. So let's restart both of them. Okay, and this is not working for us, which means something is wrong. Let's try this out over here itself. So let's put console.log and see if the read comes in. So we're saying axios.get localhost 3001 slash event cards. If we check our server side, then this is the same route slash event cards and the port is 3001. So we should be able to connect and then we should be able to get the data from there. So we're seeing, okay, yes, I think this is the problem. We should not put a comma there, but instead we should dot then. And within this, we should then put the response line. So I think this is what we missed out. Uh, we, we were not waiting for the connection to be established. And now you can see immediately we get all the data and then we can go ahead and put that in so let's remove that part and we should be good now so we have the data coming in as you can see zero one and two different data pieces are now coming in so this is now available map should now work fine okay and then i think this is not needed over here and we can put this inside the return part like so Okay. Okay, let us go ahead and check this out. So what we can do is we can say react JS map example. Okay, let's see uh, what we get. Right, so this is the kind of a setup that we have here, right? So we want to map through this and return um, yeah, this is the kind of a thing that we are looking at okay so this is reading it in a separate variable we don't want to do this
Okay, so this is again, this is just a bracket thing, right? So we should, uh, we should, we just need to be very careful with the brackets that we put in. And that is typically, you know, what causes this particular problem. Because again, the data is available with us as we can see from there. Because instead of this one, if you just write a paragraph, right? Let's say this is a para. Okay, and then I think we should be returning this. Okay, interesting. So at this point, what we can probably do is just go and check, you know, the previous code. This is true for you guys as well. If at any point uh, you get stuck here, right, then we have the entire GitHub repository with us. So we can probably just go to the repository and you can refer to a previous session right, where we did something similar. So let's see. Uh, I think here full stack crud is this where we did that connection part. You can see we have a similar, you know, um, similar code over here where we have use effect and then okay, we are not returning it over here. Okay, let's try this out once again. So this, That is not working. Okay. Uh, return component within map. Let's try to look for that. And then we can specifically search for React. Okay. And let's see what we get. So we have a setup here. Okay. And then, uh, yes, this is kind of what we're looking at. You can see. So we have applicants.map. And then within this, we have a return. Okay. And then uh, you can see it is a problem, which is fine. Yeah, so this is the kind of syntax that we're looking at. Let us take that in and see if we can work with it. So I'll just paste that sample code reference code over here. right? And I think we're doing something similar uh, we have event cards dot map and then for each applicant for each card we have to return okay so i think this could be the problem right we should use
this should be fine i guess so for each card we can then return a div okay and that is exactly what we are also trying to do we are trying to return this setup okay so return about event card and then this is not needed Okay, now this could be another issue that the data might not be accessible. Maybe it is showing up, but uh, you know, since it could be empty as well. So we have all text description, image URL and title and right there you go. We are never setting it. You can see set event cards is not called. Let me change that. And there you go. So the problem actually was not with the arrangement, but with the code itself. Uh, we just console log that data. We never set it. So this is the syntax, right? We return the whole card and we forgot to set it itself. So this was never setting the value or updating the value. So there you go. This is how we can access the data. Okay. So again, first thing is we connect to use effect using that we are connecting to our API endpoint from there. We are setting the event data and then this is the syntax to display it. So we are saying event cards and which means as long as there is an event available map through everything and for each card return this component and then we are passing the relevant props okay so this is the setup that we are now able to fetch all of that data the second thing that we want to do quickly right uh, before i let you guys uh, try this out the second thing that i want to show you is let us assume this functionality, right? So right now let us look at this functionality where we have different cities. So you can see for each city, the URL will change, right? Here you can see Indore. Okay, if I go back to Bhopal, then you can see the URL changes to Bhopal, right? So effectively what we want to do is based on that URL data, right? Based on the URL data, we want to show the relevant things to the user. Okay, so for this, let us create another endpoint. This will also be a get endpoint. And then we can say slash colon city. So this colon city is a special term. We have not discussed this so far. It's a new thing that we are talking about. This is known as a URL parameter. Okay, we call it a URL parameter. This means that the user input is actually coming directly from the URL. Okay, so how can we read it? We can read it like this. Okay, we can read it like this. And for now, let us keep it very simple. So let's say request response. Okay, and then what we can do is we can just uh, respond with the CT name, for example. So we can say response.json and we can just print out a message saying you are currently on and then let's put city. Okay, so let's say user city. So we are telling the user that you're currently on this city. How do we access this? We can access it from request dot params dot city. Okay, so this request dot params is basically a property or an object which is available on the request. Um, you know request. So request dot params gives us access to all the parameters that are passed in the URL. We can also have multiple parameters like this right? city and then we can have another parameter like so, for example. Okay. So we are looking at request dot params dot city. So whichever city we open now, whichever city we type in the URL that should be returned by us or that should be returned by the server. Okay. So this is restarted automatically. Now let's try this out on the front end. So let's go ahead and check it out. So what we'll do is we'll say localhost 3000. I will open the console so that hopefully we can see the response there. And let's type in a city name. Let's go for Bengaluru, for example. Okay. Now, as soon as we hit that URL endpoint, I think we will not see that here. Uh, but let's try to see it in the Thunder client. Okay. Because this is where the response can actually be seen. So let's go for the city name. Let's go for Bengaluru. And I I will send it. You can see it says you are currently on Bangalore. Okay. The response. If I change this city to Chennai, for example, and I send it, 
it says you are currently on Chennai. Okay. If I change this to Hyderabad, for instance, then you can see it says you are currently on Hyderabad. So the idea is that whichever city the user is clicking on, whichever city the user is accessing, we can respond with the data okay, corresponding to that. Right. So let us quickly return some data or create some data on this. So let's say on city data, okay, we have an array and here let us say that we have two objects. So let's say city is Hyderabad, for example, and then let's say event date. Let's add the second parameter. Let's keep it very simple. Let's say event date is uh, for now. Let us say it is today is 27. So let's say 27. Uh, 03 2024 okay similarly what i will do is i will change this i'll add two more cities let's say we add bengaluru and this can be 28 and then let's add now for this can be 30 okay so we have just i've just made some dummy data for three cities so if the city is hyderabad then this should be the event date if the city is uh, Bengaluru, right? then this should be the event date. And if the city is Nagpur, then this should be the event date. So what we want to do now is instead of directly responding with the message, we want to write some custom logic. So we can say, for example, let event date is equal to city data dot find. Okay, there's a find function available, just like we have the, uh, you know, the previous one, which is map. Similarly, we have find also. So for each city or for each, um, you know, let's say data or let's call it index, whatever it is. So for each index, what we want to do is we want to look at index dot city is equal to city or equal to user city. Okay. So this is going to compare, you can see city data dot find. So for each item in the city data, we are trying to compare the location wherever index.ct is equal to user city. Let's call it result. Then what we can say is we can say result dot event date. Okay, event date, not event names. So this is the result dot event date. So now what will happen is based on the city that the user has given, we should be able to get the relevant date. Okay, so let's quickly create a front end for this as well so that we can actually see this on the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new component. Let's call it event details. Event details dot js. Okay, this is going to be a simple setup. So let's call it event details. Okay, and then um, return. We'll just simply say event date. This is the only thing that we want to return. Okay. Now, again, we have to connect to the API. So we need use effect and use state as well. So use effect, use state. Okay. And then we also need Axios because of course we are connecting to the API. So import Axios from Axios. Then we can say const event date is equal to or comma set event date. Okay. And then equal to <coughs> use state. It can be empty for now, okay, empty string for now. And then we will connect to the API. So again, this connection logic is also similar in every case. First, we make a, a use state variable and then we make a use effect variable. Okay. So then within this use effect, we will connect to the endpoint and we'll set the data. So we can say axios.get. Uh, what is our endpoint? This is the HTTP local host 3000. And then 2001 and then slash the city name, right? So let us keep this, uh, you know, uh, dynamic. This is what should come from the URL. So that will be the city. Okay. For now, let's hard code it so that we can see the actual effect. And then we can say dot then. Okay, we can say um, then what we want is from the response, we want to set event date, set event date response dot data. Done. So this should be able to set that up for us and we should be good. Then finally, we can say this and here we can say event date. Now let's go and connect. So in this case, we will connect to Nagpur itself. Right? Let us try it out. So let's go for Nagpur and we also have to specify this in the index. Now this will become complicated because we'll have to set up a router 
as well so for now let us you know let us uh, not do that it will get very complicated for no reason so let's actually keep it uh, simple and test it on thunder client itself so now this time around if we go for nagpur and send it you can see it gives us the event date this time around 3324 and if i change this to hyderabad for example this then gives us 27 and then bengaluru should give us 28 so you can see the point here is that whatever data we are returning is now only one out of them we are not returning everything so based on the city that the user has chosen based on the city they are on we are getting this data from there okay so this is the entire setup right now what i will do quickly is i'll give you a few minutes uh, in case you want to experiment with this i also uh, will quickly break the fast and come so i'll give you 5 to 10 minutes you know to experiment with this so i will just open the back end and i'll keep it side by side so i'll split it to the right hand side and i'll keep it in two parts so that you understand the setup so this is the right hand side and this is the uh, i think the first half yes you can see everything the data you can modify according to your requirements okay so you can also you know go ahead and experiment with this we have discussed two things so far we have discussed how to create the backend server of course and then we have discussed two different types of return we have discussed how to return everything and we have discussed how to return a specific thing based on some input uh, coming from the user okay uh, what you can also do is i will be posting these links in the github repository also but like i told you what i have done is um, there are two three videos that are available okay and i'll give you the link to this channel as well so i have put out two videos for you uh, the first is a react mini project and then there's an express mini project that you can see right so these are longer videos you can see about 30 minutes each but what these videos will give you is a very good understanding of um, the setup so you know before you set up your project you can just refer to them okay there's another video on vs code extensions that i've created so in case you want uh, to know what extensions i am using you know or what extensions you need in vs code you can refer to that one as well okay so i'll just uh, give you access to this one as well i'll put this link in the chat itself you can just check it out okay so that way you can go ahead and you know just look at them if you need help later on it's not mandatory or anything but it's just a good resource um, for you okay so i put the link in the chat i will also add this in the repository as well uh, just in case you want that additional reference okay so uh, i'll just add it up top Okay, I've added this in the repository as well. They should take you directly to the channel. Uh, you can look at the top three, the recent three videos. They are going to be particularly helpful for you. So seven uh, must have extensions in VS Code, then React Mini Project and Express Mini Project. I'm also working on a MongoDB video. So hopefully I will put that out by tomorrow as well. So that will also you know be useful to set up MongoDB connection, all of that that will be covered in that one okay but yes we have seen how to get this data from the database now this is all dynamically coming from not database from the back end now so this is all dynamically coming from the back end you can check it check that out the code is also on the screen you can experiment with this i will come back in 10 minutes about 10 minutes 7 to 10 minutes and then i'll majorly focus on answering your questions so we'll take another look at that project report and then you know whatever questions you have regarding projects um, i'll help you with those
Okay. So before we continue uh, to the next part of the project, let me quickly take all the questions that you might have regarding the submission so far or any other question. I think I saw a question around VS code setup or something like that. So whatever doubts or questions you have at this point, please put them in the chat now and let me first answer those and then we'll move to the next part. Okay. So the first thing that I will tell you is that the abstract submission link will only be sent to your emails. Okay. Uh, there is no public link available because from your email, it will automatically detect that you are submitting it. Okay. So the deadline for abstract submission is tomorrow. The grand test already happened yesterday. So if you're looking at timelines, these are the timelines. The abstract submission must be done tomorrow. Please check your emails for the abstract submission link. Uh, please check your spam. Please check your public, uh, the inbox. Make sure you have everything. Okay. So it should be available. And, uh, you know, um, you have received emails. I have gotten a confirmation from the team that everybody has been sent those emails. Okay, so please check with your teammates also in case you did not receive it. Please check with your teammates. Uh, maybe they one of them might have received it. They can forward it to you. Yes, Rahul, emails have already been sent. I think they'll be sending it one more round to today as well. So one round emails have already been sent. One more round we'll send today also. Okay, so please make sure that you check your emails. Like I said, please check the spam. Please check the promotions. Please check inbox. It will be there. Okay, this is just like the attendance part. Uh, we cannot get, you know, we cannot directly send it to you because we want to make sure that you are the one who are submitting it. So that is done based on the email, which is registered on uh, tap tap. Okay, uh, the submission uh, format, Uday, I'll show it to you. I already showed it to you yesterday also, but let me show it to you on the screen now. So the abstract should look something like this. Okay. I will leave this on the screen for two minutes. You can quickly just check. This is for everybody else. Uh, everybody. Okay. This is true for everybody. I'm just giving you this uh, on the screen. Okay. Please uh, check. This is the format. I'll just let it be on the screen for two minutes. And I can also just share this with you. So that is also fine with me. Uh, let me just upload this on the repository as well. So I'll just make it public. Give me one second. I'll just make it public and I'll share it with you. So again, what you need to do in the abstract, you need to put two things, a brief description about the project and then key features. So ideally I'm looking at two features per person. Okay. So for example, if you are uh, three members in the team that then we are looking at six features. Okay. If you are four members in the team, then eight features. And if you are five members in the team, then we are looking at uh, 10 features. So depending on your team size, right? I can, I'm just putting this abstract sample. Okay. I'm just putting this up as abstract sample. Uh, this is now in the repository. I've also put a YouTube reference over there. So please check that out as well. It will be helpful for you. Um, there are three videos that you should check. All of them are relevant to your current, uh, what you're working on project itself. So one is around VS code extensions. One is react and the other one is express. I'll add a fourth video tomorrow on MongoDB. So you have all references and you can then easily create your project. So I've added the abstract sample as well. Uh, you can check it out from the repository, but this is what it looks like. Okay. Any other questions on this? I'll just wait for a minute. I am still thinking that, um, you know, there are questions in the chat. So let me just read through them and I'll answer it as well.
Okay. Another thing to note is that the abstract will have to be submitted by everybody individually. So we are not looking at a team abstract. We are looking at individual abstracts. But yes, obviously it should be one a common file that all of you submit. Okay. It should not happen that um, you know, five people are there in the team and all five are submitting different abstracts. That should not happen. Okay. Uh, Manohar, please check the GitHub repository. I've added the abstract link over there. So again, I've been sharing the repository link every day. Uh, let me send it once again. No problem. Okay, I have sent the repository link again. Um, please check. Okay. In case some of you are facing difficulties, not able to see member names, not able to see team details, project issues. Um, I think we already shared an email ID with you in the previous session when Akhila joined. She already told you which email to send it to. I think it was support at Blackbox, something like that. So if you know, if somebody knows that email, please put it in the chat so that everybody else can also um, just know. So if you're not able to see team details, any other project related issues, please send an email to that account or to that email ID. The team will rectify it for you. There is nothing you can do for it directly. And once you have decided the team and you've submitted that form, you cannot make any changes to it. It has to be done from the team itself. Okay. So please make sure that you send out an email to the team and um, then they will help you. I'm not looking at your emails. I'm looking at the support email. If anybody has that support email, which Akila mentioned in the previous session, please put it in the chat so that everybody can just refer to it. Okay. Uh, this Now these questions are from YouTube live. So uh, no, uh, you don't have to actually mention team details in the abstract since you are sending your emails or you're sending it from your email itself. It sh we'll sh we should be able to track who all are in the team, but make sure that everybody in the team submits the same abstract. Okay. We are not looking at, it should not happen that there are three different abstracts submitted by three different people in the team. Make one abstract together and all three of you or all five of you can submit the same abstract. Okay. Can submit the same abstract. Yes. So all team members can submit the same abstract. Um, can abstract be more than one page? Yes, yes, Pawan. If you have more features, then abstract can also be more than one page. Uh, no problem. But keep it short, like right? two pages maximum. You can see this itself is one page, and there is still plenty of space to add five more features, right? So try to keep it short because the requirements, the project report will contain detailed features. Here you just have to mention them briefly. Okay, so yes, it can go up to two pages, but try to keep it short. Uh, the template is on the screen, you guys. So everybody was asking me, what is the template for the abstract? This is the template that is on the screen. There is a description at the top and then there are key features mentioned under it. This is the template for the abstract. Again, this link is added to the repository. Please go to the repository. It is available right here. Refer to the sample and create the abstract accordingly. Okay. Um, regarding the code, I will add the code. No problem. Um, I'll add the code to GitHub after the session is done. So just like all the previous sessions, I will add that as well. I'll add it as a final project code. Can okay, I add like sample project code and I'll add that. I'll not add under a specific session. I'll just make another folder for it and I will add it. No, the GitHub link is not for abstract submission. I've written it. It is abstract sample. I've specified it very clearly. This is a sample. The abstract submission link will come to your email. That is the only place where you can find it. Okay. This will come to your email. Uh, that is up to you, right, Bhavani Prasad? The project title that you have chosen, features will be according to it. So I don't know what features are to be mentioned. You have decided the project title. So you have to choose features based on that.
Uh, so Rupert, I do mention two features per person. Again, I am saying this again. In the abstract, I want two features per person. So if there are three members in the team, we are looking at six features. If you have four members, eight features, five members, 10 features and so on. So no matter what your project topic is, we are looking at two features per person to be mentioned in the abstract. Okay, so that will be the total count. Uh, so Dinesh, I really can't help you with this. We prevent or we basically that feature wherein if you switch the tab or minimize the browser, the test will automatically submit is to prevent cheating. Okay, so that you don't copy paste code from other places. Right. So even if you were opening VS code, it is very clearly instructed in the beginning of the test that you should not close the browser window, neither minimize it, do nothing to that window. Okay. So if you just, uh, you know, um, go ahead and move to another window, move to VS code for whatever reason, it is considered as you are trying to copy something. And that is why the test automatically got submitted. So again, the only thing you can do is to get in touch with the team through that email. And if they are willing to let you write the test again, you can write it. But like I said, it is a very strict setup. We want to make sure that no cheating is taking place. And the instructions were very clearly mentioned before you start the test. I'm sure you might have read those. So again, nothing we can we can do about it really. You can just drop a message to the team. Uh, if there is a way, they will let you know. Again, so Lukesh, please check your spam folder. Please check your promotions folder. Uh, you would have received an email. The team is sending another round of emails today. So in case you have not received it, hopefully you will receive it again. But everybody has been sent, that, that email has been sent to everyone. Uh, please check your spam, promotions, whatever. And this is the same email with which you have registered. So make sure you check that email only. Not any other email, but the only email with which you have registered on tap tap. I will not answer that maneuver. I have said two per person. So you can calculate how many features you need for three people. Okay, two into three, that is what you need. Uh, the grand test was already done yesterday, Ramachandra. I don't think there is any other date. It was already done yesterday. The last date for abstract submission is tomorrow. Again, the emails will be sent again today. They will be sent again tomorrow. Everybody will receive it. Please check with your team members in case you have not received the email. Maybe your team member has received it. Please get it from them and submit it. The deadline is tomorrow. Uh, no, no, uh, Uday. So Uday is asking, will project report require code? Not at all. Project report will require screenshots. Okay, You will have to put screenshots of the output. You will not need to put any uh, code over there. So don't copy paste code in the project report. That is not required. I will show you how to deploy the code in the final session that is on Friday. Okay, And you have to submit that link. So that final output link will have to be submitted. But again, um, you don't need the code for that. You don't need to submit the code for that. Uh, the project deadline is going to be the end of April. So April last week, I think 30th of April, that will be the deadline for the project submission. So that will need project, that day we will need project report also. And that day we will need project, uh, the URL also that I said. And we might ask you for a GitHub repository with the code. So you have to submit the code. You don't have to paste it in the report. So that will be done through GitHub. I'll show it to you tomorrow in the next session. I'll show you how to submit everything. It's fine, uh, Sandeep, it's fine. As long as you're putting the uh, feature list, it's fine. Doesn't really matter if you number them or not. The feature list is important. So obviously the internship certificates, um, this is Poojita, will be given after we receive the project from you and after we, we evaluate that project, then you will get the certificates. Okay, I have answered all the questions from the Zoom chat. I've skipped the repeated questions, okay? So you can... Um, figure that out. Uh, coming back to YouTube live now.
Uh, sure, uh, I will tell you a couple of tips for the project. That's fine. And yes, like I said, the last date for submission is end of April. Okay. Uh, okay. So now let me quickly tell you the timelines that we are looking at. And then I'll also quickly tell you um, the submission details. Okay. I think that will take all the time for the day, but that's fine. Right. So the very first thing, again, pay very close attention for the next two minutes. The very first thing is that as of today, you are working on the project abstracts. Okay. You are working on the project abstract. I have a sample abstract on the screen. I have uploaded the link to this on in GitHub repository also. So this is where you can, uh, that is where you can find the abstract. Okay. That's the first thing. Now, the second thing uh, that uh, we have is that the deadline for the abstract submission is tomorrow. The deadline for the abstract submission is tomorrow. You will get, you might have already received one or if not, then you will get an email with the link to submit the abstract by today. Okay? The team has already sent it once. We are resending all emails again, right? So that you will receive them in case it missed in the first attempt. Okay. Uh, so again, like I said, we are sending the emails again. In case you have not received it, please wait till tonight. You will receive it. Irrespective of that, either you have received the email or you have not received the email, your abstract document should be ready. Okay. I have given you a sample abstract here. So with your team members, please make sure that your abstract document is ready to submit. Okay. Whenever you receive an email, immediately within two minutes, you can submit it. But don't wait for the email and then start working on the abstract. Please make sure that your abstract is already ready. As soon as you receive the email, you can submit it. The submission process is such that every member from a team must submit the abstract individually, which means everybody, every single person should submit the abstract separately. Every team's abstract should be the same. So if you are five members in the team, then all five of you have to submit the same document. You don't need to mention team members in the abstract, but every team member must submit the same abstract separately. Okay. So we are looking at five abstract submissions. If it's a five member team, we are looking at three abstract submissions in uh, for a three member team. The abstract links will be sent to your emails by tonight and you can submit it by tomorrow. Okay. There is no difference in the certificates for a team lead against normal people. It will be a standard certificate that is sent to everybody. Now coming to what you need to submit for the project and the timelines for that. The first thing is that the project submission is due on April end. Okay. The project needs to be submitted by April end. So effectively you have 30 days or so for the project. We will be having sessions in April. As of now, what I know is that they will be revision sessions. Okay. So we'll be covering all the concepts that we have covered already once again in April as the revision sessions. Okay. So like now we have 24 sessions, including Friday session. So we will have only 12 sessions in April. We'll uh, basically combine multiple topics and I'll try to cover everything, revise everything in April. So there are no new concepts that we will cover in April. The April sessions will be there, but they are meant for revision. Okay. So all those sessions will be focusing on revision. Right. Finally, coming to what you need to submit, you will have to submit three things. Okay. You will have to submit three things for your projects. Number one, you have to submit the project report, which will be a word document. It could be 50 to 60 pages, depending on your team size. If your team are three people, it will be smaller. If it is five people, more features will be there. More screenshots will be there. So the size can go big. The pages can go uh, more than 50. Okay. Again, I have given the sample project report already in the repository. It is available under session 10. Okay. You have the sample project report already available in the repository. 
this report is a 80 page report you can see about 80 85 pages okay so you can accordingly figure it out okay for your respective report it should be around 50 pages on an average okay it should be around 50 pages on an average okay if you are three people it might be 45 46 pages if you are five people it might be 60 65 pages but on an average it should be approximately 50 pages long that is the first thing that you have to submit the second thing that you have to submit is the code the code will be submitted through github so we will ask all of you to create a github repository you need to put all the code in the repository and then submit the link to that github repository similar to the link that i have been sharing with you okay so just like i have created a repository and shared the link with you in a similar way every single person every single person needs to submit the code using a github repository two the third thing that we will require from you is a working url of the project this i will show you in the next session so we are going to use a platform called netlify okay we'll use a platform called netlify to deploy our project so that we get a working url something like www.somethingsomething.com once I open that URL, I should be able to see your output. I will show you how to set this up using GitHub in the next session. Okay. I will show you how to deploy the project using GitHub in the next session. Okay. So these are the three things that you need to submit. Again, number one, the project report, which is 50, around 50 pages. Number two, the github repository where all the code will be this includes front-end code as well as back-end code okay so that and number three we are looking at a working link i will show you how to send that or how to create that in the final session on friday okay any other questions two features per person abstract links will be sent on email so please be patient if it is not already sent you will it will be sent today but you have to submit it by tomorrow so don't wait for the link please prepare and keep your abstracts ready so that as soon as you get the link you can directly submit it within one minute okay don't wait for the email please keep your abstracts ready uh, so this is again from YouTube live Ravi Kumar, please ask your college POC for this. It is different for different universities. Okay. So there is no standard answer to your question. Uh, please ask this with your respective po college point of contact. They should be able to tell it to you. Again, so Shreya, once you start working on the project after abstract is submitted and everything, then uh, you know, you can go ahead and the mentor allocation and all of that will happen after that. Okay. After you uh, basically, um, you know, submit the abstracts and you finally start working on the uh, topic. So right now, I think we are still going through, uh, we are still waiting for the abstracts to come in. So after abstract comes in, then, you know, we'll be able to uh, allocate mentors and all to you. Okay. And yes, uh, another thing in reference to uh, the abstract or in reference to support is that uh, I have already done this, but again, let me repeat. I have added a link um, to your GitHub repository, which I have shared with you already. Okay. It is the first link here called YouTube reference. So when you start working on the project, I recommend you spend some time on this by looking at the first three, four videos. There are three videos right now. I will be adding a fourth one tomorrow for your reference. The first one is on VS Code extensions that you need to install. They Again, they are optional. If you want to install them, you can. The second one is on creating a proper React application from scratch. The third one is on creating an Express server from scratch. And then the fourth one, which will come, come out tomorrow, will be on MongoDB project setup. Okay, so I have tried to create these videos for you guys so that you have a reference point. 
so even if you're not able to connect with your mentor if something needs to be done urgently you don't have time you can quickly refer to these videos in these videos you will also notice that the source code has also been given okay so if you just check the description i have given the code as well so there is a link to the final code as well okay so again i have created these videos so that they will be helpful for you right so you have some reference point uh, the link to the channel is added in the repository itself okay it's the first link in the repository called youtube reference so please make sure that you check this out if you are stuck somewhere i recommend checking it out before you start working on the project okay so that you have a reference point to start with okay uh, yes yes um, kushbu like i said two features per person so if there are six people then 12 features right yes there should be 12 features in everybody's abstract because everybody is asking the same um abstract. everybody has to submit the same abstract and yes you can submit the abstract either as a pdf or as a word document it doesn't really matter it should be either a pdf or a word document okay one of those two formats will be fine okay uh, now i have also given the repository link again in the chat so please take it from there okay please make sure you have this repository everything that we have discussed all the presentations all the code snippets everything is available over there already along with all the references uh, no problem sandeep as long as there are features mentioned we are good okay anything else any other questions um the abstract link is in the repository you guys please open the repository it is already there in the repository there is no point in sending links separately you only need one link with you for the entire project which is the repository please open the repository the abstract link is already over there uh in the tejaswini in the project report you will have to put screenshots of the output so the first screen second screen um database all of those things so front end back end and database all output screenshots will be required and up to again the submission date is april end the project submission date is april last week okay april last week Okay, I think that's it from my side. Um, you know, I am not answering any more questions because everything is repeated. So if you have any doubts or questions, please go back to the video later recording and watch it again. Okay, there is no point in uh, answering the same questions again. Uh, yes, the authentication will cover Arvin in the next session. So when we set up MongoDB, uh, we will cover authentication over there. Okay, so I'll show you authentication also um, in the next one. Okay, now I am asking the team to share the feedback links on both Zoom and YouTube. Uh, please make sure you fill this in and uh, yeah, then we can wrap up for today. So today we have looked at the, uh, today we have looked at the setup for uh, backend and then in the next one, we'll again put all of them together. So front end, back end database, we'll see how to link everything together. Okay. And we'll also discuss authentication. So we'll cover that in the next session. Remember the session on Friday will be the final session or the last session in this series. Okay. Uh, which is where we discuss new concepts. Everything after that, everything in April, whatever sessions we will have, they will all be sessions that are going to be uh, revision sessions. So we'll not discuss new things, but yes, I will be available to help you with your project doubts. So we'll keep a 10, 15 minute, 20 minute slot uh, in every session so that if you are struggling with your projects, you can come to the session, share your screens and I will help you solve problems or issues if you face any. So that will be our plan um, for April. Okay, perfect. So uh, the feedback links are in the chat. Please make sure you fill them in. And um, yes, that's basically what we have for today. Uh, so Bhagirathi, again, for e-commerce standard features, um, product display, user uh, ratings, cart page, um, order tracking if possible, or view all orders, those kind of projects, you uh, those kind of features you can implement. You can also have project filters.
sharing, a product search, all those kind of things as well. Okay, so I hope that um, works. And again, please crawl in the chat. We have already sent the feedback links. Please fill that in. And yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you so much guys for attending. Um, have a great day. And let's connect again on Friday. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.